Why can't it just be happy for five minutes? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Two Cent Beat. I'm Sadie. And I'm Kat. And this time we're bringing you guys episode six of Fruits Basket. Last time, not only did Momiji grow up, but his bond broke. Ah! Uh, but he's free now. He's like so done with Akito. <laughs> he's so done with Akito. <laughs> it's not just done. <laughs> He's so done with her. Yeah. I mean, that face, that expression that he had, he's just like, ugh, you're pathetic. <laughs> but we also found out that he had these, or he has these feelings for Toru, mm -hmm. but he knows he can't have her, so he's been like egging Kyo on. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we'll see some development with Kyo and Toru this episode. Mm, right, right. Probably, since they put it so much in the forefront last episode. And because... Momiji's bond just broke. I kind of feel like we're gonna wait a while before Haru's bond breaks. It's starting to, but I think he's still pretty attached. Yeah, I think Haru is like kind of in a content place right now. Has uh, Rin next to him safe, you know? So I think for now he's gonna focus on like taking care of her, making sure they're okay. Yeah, so maybe we'll see even that too, like some of her actually being happy, like letting go and just being content with Haru. Maybe. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe Toru can finally see her again and mm -hmm. talk to her. So we never know how long Momiji's had feelings for Toru, right? Like when they started or anything. I guess. <laughs> but just just thinking back on it and the way he acted with her and everything, it's like, oh, why didn't I see it before? Mm -hmm. How was I so oblivious to it? The way he was always like wanting to hold her hand, wanting to bathe with her and whatnot. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> Momiji. You think he's just like another little kid, but it's like, oh. Right? Because he's so small. I'm like, oh no, you're, you're precious. You must be protected. You're innocent. It's like, oh, wait. You're a teenage boy. He is a teenage boy and he's, he's calling himself a man. He's like, oh, you know what you're doing. I see you, Momiji. Something else I was thinking about, I guess kind of with the whole Momiji being done with Akira, is like, all of the ones who are younger than her don't know that she's a, a woman, right? They still think she's a guy. Mm -hmm. So they don't have like that same compassion that the older ones do of like wanting to protect her and take care of her. So like, as soon as their bond breaks or whatever, they just see this guy who's been putting them down and now they don't need to anymore. Mm, that's true. So I feel like, it'll, right? It'll be like a lot easier for them to leave her quote-unquote abandon her there's none of that like supposedly innate instinct to protect her or anything anymore they'll mm -hmm. just see her as a guy it's like you can do it on your own so i am curious if and when they'll find out about that because i feel like they will find out she's a girl eventually yeah they have to right for shigeru's I sake so. i guess at the very right. least yeah i feel like the closure of her character arc is gonna have to do with like her gender identity and all that coming to light and like mm -hmm. her working through it and everything. I would hope. Maybe it doesn't though. Yeah. But it'd be it'd be nice. It did. Just like she's being honest with everybody about everything. Mm -hmm. Then they can accept her for who she truly is. Mm -hmm. So let's just get on into this episode. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh no. Oh why is she crying already? <laughs> Good for you. Oh there are these places. Her hair is so short though. <laughs> Possibly. <gasps> oh, wow. <gasps> oh? No? Oh, she just said. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, gosh. Oh, goodness. My goodness. Oh. Oh, he just tells her. <laughs> Y'all are close. Of course. Oh, my God. Oh, calm down. <gasps> the, the final banquet. banquet. <gasps> oh, she heard oh, all that! Oh here. my gosh! Wow! She needs to do it before Kyo gets locked up. That's not good enough. Oh, her hair is cute. Oh! Oh! That was, we heard that a long time ago. Oh. Oh. I didn't realize they used to be so spread out. Yeah, I thought it was always like this. Oh my god! This damn this face! <laughs> Wow, she's seeing his dark side now. Oh my gosh! Oh Damn. my gosh! <gasps> oh, oh, holy! Wow. Frost, frost exclude. Oh, poor thing. <gasps> oh. Oh, she's so sweet. 
She's inside of her. Ah, oh, his kids. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, what the f? Oh, that poor thing. Hmm. <laughs> She's cute. Hey. <laughs> doesn't mean anything to him. She asking you? She asking her? Oh, yeah. That's <gasps> pity. That's pure pity. No, if it's cruel and greedy, greedy, I don't think so. Mm. She just wants to save Kyo. Oh, he wants to be with him. Oh. Take him away oh. from her. Oh. 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 Oh, he's like, oh my god. She slept. Oh my god. She's so little. She's happy to worry about this. Oh. What? Cover her face, hide from him. Oh, 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 she's just looking at herself. episode out already because I need to know what's gonna happen holy crap oh my god oh I mean like I knew it I mean I didn't know it but I I, I had a, a gut feeling I feel like it could be one of those where he blames himself for doing something but he wasn't the actual cause of it at least that's what I hope it is like I'm pretty sure she didn't actually say I'll never forgive oh, you oh yeah no <laughs> in the way that he's remembering it. yeah yeah because he just not remembered this event, right? Mm -hmm. So he had like blocked it, so maybe it's like twisted and then he'll remember it the correct way later on mm -hmm. if something happens. Yeah, I think... Um, Hopefully. I think it's one of those where it's like, it was too traumatic for him and now that it's been pushed back into his mind and like knowing Toru and knowing what like losing her mother caused her, it's like he's blame 
blaming himself even more mm-hmm. and like distorting this whole incident even more. At least, hopefully, <laughs> cause right. But the whole thing about like her mom leaving the picture and the spirit being behind him, it's like, yeah, maybe she is angry. Yeah. Maybe something did happen. I feel like that could be just Toru because of all this like self, like not self doubt, but all this doubt that she's been having of like Kyo kind of replacing. Not replacing, but like growing in importance to her, kind of taking her mother's place, but not really, because of all that. Like, like she feels like it's wrong that Kyo is like so important to her now, and that she's forgetting all of mm-hmm. her mother's memories and stuff. So maybe that's her way of like interpreting how her mother would feel, or how she feels like she needs to be like punished or something. Obviously, her mother's not like that. It just seems like they are both perceiving her. As like the one who is supposed to punish them for what they, mm-hmm. how they are, what they're feeling, what they did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I guess they both feel like this guilt towards her. Yeah, guilt. That's the word. Thank you. That's just so sad because she was so cool and like you know she wouldn't be mm-hmm. that way. But mm-hmm. they were so sweet this episode. <laughs> that whole scene with the sheet in between them, like closing the distance between mm-hmm. them, but still not quite there yet. Yeah, I almost thought that like the sheet would be enough to prevent Kyo from transforming. <laughs> like, oh, it's not quite. it's a not. sheet. It, they're not t- actually touching, but no. It'd be too easy if that was all you had to do. Yeah, that doesn't make sense because they they still transform when they're clothed. They have clothes on, so oh, yeah, true. yeah, that doesn't make sense. I don't know why. My hopes, I got my hopes up, but. <laughs> but she at least admitted. To someone, like to herself and to some others that she wants to、mm-hmm. She just has to tell him, but in order to tell him, she has to get over this guilt she has towards him.、Mm-hmm. But also, though, what she admitted was like that she does have feelings for him. It's not just pity, like other people were suspecting. Right. Or like with the previous cat. I feel like because of that, their love is true, their strength will prevail, and they'll, they'll end up happily ever after. But I really like the way that Toru admitted, like, that she liked Kyo. Because the way she said, like, does this, is this greed? It's definitely not pity. Like, it's 100%、mm-hmm. the opposite of pity. It shows how much, how passionate she is about Kyo. Not、mm-hmm. a pitying way, but like a, like, lover's type of way. She wants him out of desire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my. It, it just shows how, like, strongly she feels about him. <laughs> But I also like that because she's telling this to Isuzu, and so she does kind of say, like, she's kind of apologetic to her in that, like, I've been lying to you, like,、mm. I, I say I want to break the curse and I want to do this. So she is, she still, like, feels bad towards her for feeling this way, but it's like, but this is the deal. Like, I don't want any of this to hold me back from being、mm-hmm. with you. Like, I feel like it was almost in a, in a sense, like, I'm sorry that. That what I want to do in breaking the curse isn't out of like compassion for all of you. It's because I want、mm-hmm. to be with Kyo and I want him to have freedom and stuff. So I feel like that's where her apology kind of comes from. She probably wishes she wants to save them、mm-hmm. all, but what she really、mm-hmm. wants is to be、mm-hmm. with him. Yeah. And I think, yeah, on some level, yes, she wants their freedom. You know, she wants to break the curse for them. But deep down, the main reason、mm-hmm. is to, for her to be with Kyo. Or Kyo to have、mm-hmm. not be bound by the curse anymore. Like, kind of like what Momiji was saying that, like, if Kyo's curse was broken, then she'd be the happiest. So, yeah, yeah. She, she admits it too. She knows. And we kind of saw that also, where, like, she hears Shigure saying, like, it's gonna break eventually. And, like, the others, they can live and manage、mm-hmm. until that happens. But she's like, no, it has to be、mm-hmm. now. Exactly. Yokata. Are you ready to be a Am I giving Shigure too much credit in my mind?、Maybe. Why? Because, like, he finally showed Toru like, this darker side to、mm-hmm. him, right? Maybe he has some kind of hunch that she is the one who will be able to break the curse sooner. And it's like, he wants her to do something. So he was like egging、mm-hmm. her on to do it. He was pushing her. Because he wants it broken still so that he can be with Akio、mm-hmm. without all the others getting in、mm-hmm. the way. So I feel like, in a way, in his own twisted way, he was almost being kind. <laughs> And even to Rin, like saying, like, yeah, what you tried didn't work, but you don't need to do anything anymore.、Mm-hmm. 
and then like putting it on Toru. Maybe. Like obviously I think it still comes from that like selfishness of wanting uh, Akito mm-hmm. to himself. But I mean he he himself admitted that like his kindness is a rapidly miss... What did, what did he say? It was like a quickly misshapen kindness. Like it's not what other people perceive as kindness. So yeah, it could be. He's using his tactics to move the plan forward. Move the plan forward. I guess the way that Toru has been like holding on to her mom, I don't know, just thinking at it, thinking about it now again, it's like, oh, this is, this, it is kind of wrong. There is something kind of traumatic about it. Like looking back on it, it's like, oh yeah, there's definitely something that she couldn't move past with her mom's death. Mm-hmm. And obviously now it's like we're seeing like, oh yeah, it stems from like when her father passed too and everything. So yeah, basically trauma. We know that her mom was really important to her and she hasn't really been able to like let her go. Mm -hmm. Even like these feelings that she has, she's feeling guilty because it's basically moving Mm -hmm. on and like she'll be happy but she doesn't want and yeah. Mm -hmm. She's in the process of moving on currently but she feels this guilt Mm -hmm. for moving on. It's like Mm -hmm. obviously her mother is still stuck in how she was in the past and so it's like she's moving away from her mother. Like every time she said like her mother's disappearing it's like no it's not actually your mother that's disappearing it's you who's moving forward even with the grandpa saying like calling her kyoko intentionally Mm -hmm. to say like she is still with Mm -hmm. you i think she she needs to realize that like even if she doesn't prioritize her mom she still loves her mom her mom's love is still with Mm -hmm. her she can be happy and still not be not act like her father not be called by her mother's name you know she can like still still honor them without keeping them at the forefront Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without like impersonating them basically that scene of like her looking at the dad's suit and then looking in the mirror seeing that she doesn't look like him and then trying to speak like him so she can resemble him and then making the bad guy is just you're so little you shouldn't have to go through she was like what how old was she like six four she was a baby. Right, like four or something. She was a baby. <laughs> he died when she was three. When she was three! <laughs> oh, it's she was again. three. As a three-year-old, she made the conscious effort of sounding like her father. No three-year-old needs to take on that burden. So that was an emotional episode. We're beginning to unpack a lot of trauma. Just gotta see what else gets unpacked in the next episode. It's thanks to you guys and all our patrons on Patreon that we're able to do what we love. So thank you guys, and we hope to see you next time. Bye! Bye.